Hello everyone, I welcome you all to today's Twister lecture series. I am Dr. Abhisha Sinha from the Department of Statistics, Bethlehem College. Today I am going to talk about the oldest debate of science. Are we alone in this universe? Uh, well, you are, don't take me wrong. I am not going to talk about whether aliens exist or not. I am going to talk, uh, talk about can we look for them? What are the grounds? What are the odds? So let's see. Before starting, I would like to render my heartiest regards to our principal ma'am, Professor Krishna Roy, whose initiative and encouragement is the result of these twist lecture series. I'd also like to thank my colleagues of the Department of Statistics and Obishek and Srijoni of Computer Science Department for giving me this opportunity. Well, um, before starting, I would like to share my childhood obsession or my motivation behind this research. Uh, I, am a, I am a doctorate in, uh, in Astro Statistics and I am very fortunate or, or I find myself very lucky to have um, studied or to have researched in the area I wish to study from beginning. So, um, well, my motivation came from uh, Professor Shunku's Boom Jatri Diary. I hope many of us have gone through it. So, let's not waste any more time and, uh, well, let's start our presentation. Well, yeah, as you can see, it's a picture of the ET and uh, I hope most of us has been through this movie and it's a nice movie of a little boy and how he saved an extraterrestrial, he en encountered him and saved him and helped him to return to his planet. So, um, I hope you like it. So, I'll begin with some common queries. From decades, mankind have been in search of his neighbors to discover are they the only ones living in this vast universe. Various research units across the globe have been dedicating scientists, research teams, costly machineries, telescopes, lots of time and money from time unknown. We wonder, has there been no discoveries yet? Or the discoveries have been hushed up by various governments and what are the causes? Or have been there any encounters yet or not? Well, I'm not going into the debate again. I'm going into the basics, whether we can look into life, whether they exist in other planets or not. So to start with, uh, let us see how Earth and life came to exist. Well, as you all know, uh, everything started with the Big Bang, which occurred in roughly 14 giga years, that is 14 billion years um, before. And, uh, and there was nothing initially and then there was a big bang and then the universe came to form. So what was, what was the big bang? So it is said that before the big bang there was a nebula. Nebula means charged particles of hydrogen, helium and lithium that is the three lightest atoms in the periodic table. And um, the nebula they exist in that form until and unless some conditions are violated, then they go gra gravitational collapse. But this thing is happening still. That is, there are still banks are there in the universe. And through these banks, uh, stars, galaxies are formed. I will come to that later. But let's just start with or um, see how Earth came to exist. So after the big bang, those elements, that those uh, hydrogen, helium and lithium, these elements gradually came together to form stars. These early stars were massive and short-lived, producing heavier elements through stellar nucleosynthesis. Carbon, currently the fourth most abundant chemical element in the universe after hydrogen, helium and oxygen, was found mainly in white dwarf stars, particularly those bigger than two solar masses. As these stars reached the end of their life cycles, they ejected these heavier elements, among them carbon and oxygen, throughout the universe. These heavier elements allowed for the formation of new objects, including rocky planets and other bodies. Well, this is a picture of the Big Bang, hypothetical picture of course, 
uh, imagined by artists and drawn by graphics designers and you can see that uh, it depicts the spiral shape of our universe so um, i hope uh, many of us have gone through the theory that universe is still expanding and uh, god knows where to where it is expanding but it is still expanding because when scientists go and look um, at the different light curves i will come what is called light curve so um, suppose some brightness or some um, the lights we have some devices uh, by which we can capture the lights from the different stars and uh, by that light or the timing required to capture that light one can judge or estimate the distance of the star so if you if uh, if uh, scientists have find found out that when they examine two stars closely and after a time after time has elapsed they can see that the stars have moved apart from each other so if, considering that they can't move apart from each other we can only rely on the theory that our universe is still expanding and this is another picture of the big bang how things were formed you can see it well uh, then i will go to the nebular hypothesis that is how stars are formed stars were formed and stars are still forming in this universe uh, after that big bang i told you that everything started with the nebula the nebula is nothing but molecular clouds so that nebula consist in that state until and unless some uh, some uh, conditions are violated and these conditions are that is the um, that is the that is the pressure or the Uh, or the other things that vary inside and outside the nebula, and they remain in that state until and unless that condition is um, that condition is stable. And when that condition is violated, they undergo collapse. And in a gravitational way, in a higher hierarchical gravitational collapse, they undergo collapse. I will just see or explain how the cloud cloud collapse happens in the universe. Okay. so most of the collapsing mass collected in the center they form stars um, sun is one of the star and uh, they form red dwarfs white dwarfs planets and other celestial bodies okay and uh, this is how our solar system was also formed not only our solar system our galaxy was also formed so hidden art is called the initial art so uh, how was art formed it was nothing but a mass that is a part of the sun and when sun was at his initial stage and there was uh, lots of fuel in there and it was undergoing blast and blast and then some particles got separated from the sun and got scattered here and there so these particles when time goes on they get cooled down and they starts orbiting behind the uh, round the star round our sun and that's how planets are formed so when the initially the hidden art this was nothing but what you call a kagula so that a kagula it was impossible to hold any uh, life in that a kagula as you can see this is a picture um, i i will see you i will uh, show you picture of hidden art but before that i will try to explain how art was initially well the hidden art was at first in hospitable to any living organism during its formation the art lost a significant part of its initial mass and consequently lacked the gravity to hold molecular hydrogen and the bulk of the original inert gases the atmosphere consisted largely of water vapor nitrogen and carbon dioxide with smaller amounts of carbon monoxide hydrogen and sulfur compounds The hidden atmosphere has been characterized as a gigantic productive outdoor chemical laboratory similar to volcanic gases today we still support some abiotic chemistry those who study abiogenesis that is the origin of life that is uh, there is a society among the scientists who study about how life started in this earth and um, how things that is the darwinian evolution went on and so and so forth so they rely on few hypotheses and let us see how what are the hypotheses they rely on the origin of life is a result of supernatural event that is one irretrievably 
वी रिच वेबली बियॉन्ड द डिस्क्रिप्टिव पावर्स ऑफ फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री एंड अदर साइंस दैट इज सम ऑफ देम दे कॉन्सिडर दैट लुक आई कैन नॉट एक्सप्लेन लाइफ हाउ लाइफ वॉज फॉर्म्ड इट वॉज समथिंग सुपर नेचुरल गॉड केम मे देयर एंड ही मेड एडम एंड ईव एंड दैट्स हाउ थिंग्स स्टार्ट Well, some say that life, particularly simple forms, spontaneously, spontaneously and readily arises from non-living matter in short period of time. Today, as in the past. Well, some says that uh, if you collect some non non-living parts and if you mix them carefully and in the proper proper um, doses and in proper environment, then you can create life. So we can ask them. If that is true, then how can they create life synthetically in the laboratory? Well, uh, scientists couldn't give this answer till date, and still life remains mystery. So, from all that considerations about life, we can ask, what is life? Well, I will come to that part, but just let uh, let us uh, look further into the hypothesis. Some also says. Say that life is co-eternal with matter and has no beginning. Life arrived or not at the time of Earth's origin or shortly thereafter. So some of them believe that life was not initially formed in the Earth since Earth was nothing but a kagula. So after some time, when the Earth started to cool down and it was cold enough to support water in its um, liquid form, then only life began. and life uh, some say that life is nothing that bingo here is life no not like that so some say that life arrived on earth it was planted on earth at the time of earth's origin or shortly thereafter now comes the question who planted them or how did uh, how did that thing came from where did it came from how much time it was required to come from and all that and some also say that life arose on the early earth by a series of progressive chemical reactions such reactions may have been likely or may have required one or more highly improbable chemical events so considering all these hypotheses we can see what is life now let us look what we can call as living or what or what things we can call as life so life is anything which can be characterized with self replication of cells and as a result growth ability to collect derive or manufacture food for growth and above all ability to reproduce that is has some genetic materials that is passed on so collection of all these three things can be said to be life or any organism of any object which has or which can do these three things or has the ability to act according to the three, three things can be called living okay so scientists fails to achieve anything or synthetically grow or synthetically manufacture anything having all these abilities with some mm, non living matters okay so what i told you the this is a picture of the hidden earth that is the aapka gola and it got separated from the sun and it was like this and then um, after it started cooling down and then water water and um, other things in liquid form they started formation in its liquid form and you, one can see this thing in the volcano still date and if you if uh, we dig down into the earth we can also see that wild form or the hidden form of the earth which was initially there and there is another theory that is the ancient astronaut theory so ancient astronauts or ancient aliens refer to pseudo scientific hypothesis that intelligent extraterrestrial beings visited the earth and made contact with humans in antiquity and prehistoric times Directed panarsmia is the deliberate transport of microorganisms into space to be used as induced species on lifeless but habitable astronomical objects. Now I'd like to add a few more um, things about directed panarsmia. 
directed panarsemia is said to be some uh, experiment uh, conducted by some uh, living things in which life can be induced upon some uh, some other things say uh, scientists can collect the dna of a um, say long lost or extinct dinosaur and they uh, when they plant it or they insert it into some eggs of a um, lizard and they can create dinosaurs from that so this is nothing but directed panarsemia and people or scientists believe that we are result of directed panarsemia that is someone or some people or some intelligent extraterrestrial beings they implanted us or implanted life in uh, maybe cellular form or bacterial form or whatever form into this planet to see how things grow and people also argue that if anyone is so intelligent to have um, initiated this directed panarsemia so are they looking after the experiment are they still looking after us whatever you are we are going or whatever direction we are going or how we are evolving and some also say that can we we intelligent human beings can perform directed panarsemia into other civilizations like into other planets which are habitable then comes to the question of what are what planets are habitable i will come to that but before that i will just explain our end up this ancient astronaut theory so there are some basic researches about some well known scientists and uh, astronomers and astrophysicists well they they hypothesized and they researched and they formed some um papers and uh, theories and some are listed here I'm not going into the details you can look at it if you go, if you like then i will go into the star formation scenario that is how the stars are formed that is uh, i'll show you a picture of the nebula and show you the gravitational collapse thing which i was explaining previously so this is a picture of the butterfly nebula you can see it's very beautiful and they exist in this form until and unless that equilibrium conditions are violated and this is a picture of the dumbbell nebula and um, see and when this things when this uh, molecular clouds their equilibrium is violated then they go big bang or big collapse and then stars are formed so let's see into how stars and black holes and planets and all celestial bodies are formed from this um, blast okay so let us assume that this big circle is nothing but the parent molecular cloud okay so this is a parent molecular cloud some mass some specific mass and suppose the equilibrium condition here is valid so it will undergo gravitational collapse so when it collapses it breaks or it fragments into smaller parts see the smaller circles they are the first generation and these will this will undergo more collapse uh, into second generation and into third generation and so on until the equilibrium is reached and you see the smaller dots these are nothing but the stellar masses so from these masses when they uh, glow or they cool down they become stars or white dwarfs or red dwarfs or planets or even black holes so everything is the result of this blast and most interestingly this blast is still going on as i explained so a uh, lot number of stars are still forming are still being born and some die and so this uh, dying and uh, living and um, coming to life process is not only with the living beings it is also with the stars and all these things come with the nebula that the picture i showed you so can life be found beyond earth so i will just place the basic foundations or the hypothesis behind how can we look or why would we look or is there any basis for our looking or for our um, for our belief to find life beyond earth the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence is directly related to habitability and the galactic habitable zone where habitable planets are located and where potential life are most likely to form the standard definition of galactic habitable zone is that the habitable zone is the range of distances from a star 
in which liquid water could be, could exist so here i would like to add some few sentences about galactic habitable zone so um have we ever thought why why only earth in our whole solar system is so blessed with life well uh, scientists found out that and they found that it is placed in such a position that is the distance from the sun which is just adequate to hold water in its liquid form not only earth there is also another blessed planet uh, can you guess well yes it's mars so that is why um, various governments are trying so much to find out whether there is life or not on on mars or not or yeah or the martians are um, responsible for they made the directed pinarsemia or not but still we haven't found any clue as to find liquid uh, water in mars well then i'll go back to galactic habitable zone an early study explored this concept of galactic belt of life based on the consideration of the co rotation of stars and density wave later another study proposed partial and temporal aspects of galactic habitability and assisted by quantifying the abundance of metals in the galaxy and predicting favorably for planet formation so this is picture of our galactic habitable zone in the middle you can call it a sun this is our sun or uh, whether whatever planet or whatever solar system or whatever system of stars and planets you are examining and it is a specific distance that is marked in the green that is called the galactic habitable zone here life can be found so if we get or if you get hold of any such system which is a which is at a perfect distance from the sun and which falls in this galactic habitable zone then bingo we can call the will that will it there's life okay so i will go about the earlier study that is on the galactic habitable zone and it was also called circumstellar habitable zone or also called goldilocks zone uh, it, the name came from uh, the child fantasy or child fairy tale goldilocks and the three bears and uh, i hope most of us have been through it and we all know how goldilocks it is a it is a little girl and who found out just appropriate situations which fits her fits her that is she found out the appropriate plate of food which would be not hot enough or cold enough for her to take and the appropriate bed which is not too hard or too soft for her to lie down lie down so life is like goldilocks and life finds finds out a uh, best or best um, habit or best um, zone for her to dwell on well it was first introduced by edward monder in 1913 and in 1953 you can see that all this study they are not very far away into the 20th century um the study actually came into being because of some hypothesis because of some theory i will go into that theory or some uh, equation there was a famous well known equation called drake equation and after that equation came into being um, people started examining more and more and this is just uh, some previous study of people uh, of scientists or astronomers uh, who suggested or put forward hypothesis or find out something and uh, let's skip this well the term goldilocks zone emerged in 1970 referring specifically a region around the star whose temperature is just right for water to be present in the liquid phase In 1993, astronomer James Casting introduced the term circumstellar habitable zone to refer more precisely to the region then and still known as the habitable zone. An update to habitable zone concept came in 2000 when astronomers Peter Ward and Donald Brownlee introduced the idea of the galactic habitable zone, which they later developed with Gallimar Galag. Galileo Gonzales. A uh, pardon, I beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. Well, in two thousand thirteen, further developments in habitable zone concepts were made 
with the proposal of circum planetary habitable zone also known as the habitable age to encompass the region around the planet where the orbits of natural satellite would not be disrupted and at the same time tidal heating from the planet would not cause liquid water to boil away now comes the famous equation that is how people started or got involved into finding about life in other planets and it's all started from frank drake and he was an he was an eminent astrophysicist and astronomer and he introduced the equation now known as the famous drake equation and the drake equation is a probabilistic argument used to estimate the number of active communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the milky way galaxy the equation was formulated in 1961 by frank drake not for purposes of quantifying the number of civilization but to be to simulate scientific dialogue at the first scientific meeting on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence well seti is an organization dedicated or dedicated into finding extraterrestrial intelligence and uh, now we we'll go into the drake equation this is the drake equation and they have lots of parameters Mm, all the parameters are explained here you can have a look the last three parameters uh, are very probabilistic or very hard to find out and since they are very hard to find out so is n that is the whole part that is the number of civilization in our galaxy uh, in which communication might be possible note that drake he concentrated about civilization in the milky way itself but researchers claim that there are thousands and millions of milky way in the universe so we have no means of finding out whether whether uh, there are any habitable zone or any life outside our our milky way or our galaxy or not because our devices until when unless we can kill um, the time taken to taken to get a signal signal we cannot go about continuing um, the research further because we need more and develop development regarding our um, devices now we'll come to the usefulness of the drake equation the drake equation amounts to a summary of the factors affecting the likelihood that we might detect radio communication from intelligent extraterrestrial life the last three parameters f i f c and l are not known and are very difficult to estimate with values ranging over many orders of magnitude therefore the usefulness of the drake equation is not in the solving but rather in the contemplation of all the various concepts which scientists must incorporate when considering the question of the life elsewhere and gives the question of life elsewhere a basis for scientific analysis the equation has helped draw attention to some particular scientific problems related to life in the universe for example abiogenesis the development of multicellular life and the development of intelligence itself well drake he was a good storyteller and star story talker at least mm, he started the story and he showed scientists and astronomers the direction where to look for and how to look for and then uh, all that thing started from his equation now we'll come to the organization there is an another organization they are called exoplanet hunters will they look for exoplanets whether there are any habitable planets or not they don't particularly look for life but they look for exoplanets or habitable planets in which life may exist planet hunters is a citizen science project to find exoplanets using human eyes it does this by having user analyzed data from the nasa kepler scape and space telescope and the nasa transiting exoplanet survey satellite it was launched by team by devra fisher at yale university as a part of the zooniverse project the planet hunter project exploits the fact that humans are better at recognizing visual patterns than computers so these exoplanet hunters they don't always rely on computers they go and look for whatever signals our websites are or um, satellites are sending 
and they analyze them and they try to find out whether there are any habitable planet outside waiting for us and whether these planets are habited or not. The website displays an image of the data collected by NASA Kepler Space Mission and asks human users to look at the data and see how the brightness of a star changes over time. So let's just skip this and go into the discovery. What the exoplanet hunters they found out. Well, these are the discoveries. They found 12 minimal observations uh, and they have analyzed and they have found out many um, important things like binary stars and multiple star system and they have found out whether um, whether there any, any galactic habitable zone or not and they have actually located some uh, like the KIC 8462852 and KIC 8462852 and 856 and KIC 11412044 and other things. Uh, these are all names of planets which they discovered and they think that or they mm, guess that or they hope that these are habitable planets. Well, they couldn't detect life or detect any signal uh, received from that those planets. Now, uh, I will just skip this and go into the findings. The challenge is, at least for now, is that astronomers don't have firm numbers on any of those variables defining the Drake equation. So, any calculation of the Drake equation remains a rough estimate for now. Well, when estimate comes, I would like to add, uh, comes the portion of statisticians or the work of statisticians. I will go to that, but just let's complete this. The recent discoveries of rocky worlds near Proxima Century, a star of the Alpha Century system and Trappist-1 have increased the public attention on the search for life. These stars, however, are red dwarfs and that might be too volatile for life. More studies needed to understand where life might be possible and whether it could persist long enough to communicate with other civilizations. As of March 2018, more than 3,708 exoplanets have been confirmed and all these uh, signals have been received through the Kepler's telescope and the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, Hubble Space Telescope, as, you, as we all know, it is located in the Earth itself and Kepler's telescope, it is a satellite which is projected outside the Earth and um, they sent all the signals and by analyzing all the signals, hmm, the exoplanet hunters, they found out all these things and there are still study going on. Now recent developments. Well, this is a picture of the recent, a very recent satellite which is sent to our, uh, sent outside Earth to find out specifically whether any extraterrestrial living beings uh, exist outside Earth or not. Or to find out get the galactic habitable zone or habitable planets. Well, this telescope or this um, satellite is known as the James Webb Space Telescope and it, was ex and it is expected to be one of the primary instruments scientists use to continue the search for planets outside our solar system. And this is how it was sent. It was sent on a rocket on 24th of December 2021 and it was done by NASA and um, when we all the people are very uh, feared or very afraid about COVID going outside and they, there are people, they are discovering, they are continuing their research about exoplanets and finding life outside out and um, here it's up just uh, proof of how they are de dedicated and motivated towards their um, study. So more about the James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, we all know the Hubble Space Telescope, the Spicer Space Telescope and the Kepler Space Telescope. They are very recent and they have been sending lots of information throughout decades and uh, from when they have been established. And um, this is the details about the James Webb Space Telescope when it was launched and uh, how much it costed and the collaborators and all that and the specification or the features and all is there and it is a very good telescope and it promises uh, to give us evidence what we were lacking all these years. So James Webb Web Space Telescope is expected to be more advanced than all the previous telescope and people expect that 
uh, look we can find out if there is life if we, we are not alone in this universe then we can find out through the James space web space telescope now we'll come to the statistical part that is how statistics or uh, how can statistics contribute contribute to to the study before uh, when i established or when i um, told you about the drake equation i told you that many of the things are need to be estimated and most of us know when the estimation comes comes statistics so i will just go into the um, estimation part or the, how statistics can contribute so the statistical approach is the best way to estimate the probability of extraterrestrial life thus frank drake try to estimate the number of civilization in the milky way capable of emitting a detectable sign into space and willing to communicate using his now famous equation nevertheless in astrobiology the search for extraterrestrial life is not limited to intelligent civilizations on the contrary research in this domain mostly focuses on microbial life particularly with respect to the solar system at the microbial scale recent exploration of the solar system has shown that environments compatible with the existence of life may be relatively common in the universe and it is widely believed that life may have appeared on other bodies in the solar system for example below the icy crust of the moons of saturn and jupiter or on mars hmm. if life appeared on uh, this is very interesting um, finding uh, finding these are very interesting finding or depends if life appeared on a solid body other than the earth in solar system this should mean that life is very common in the universe statistically leading to a strong increase in the number of potential civilizations estimated by the drake equation concomitantly the absence of traces of life on another habitable body in the solar system does not mean that life is unique to the earth but it means that it is potentially rarer in the universe so statistics also says that hmm, we are not alone it's a hypothesis or probability defining the complexity of an organism is not obvious indeed complex self organizing structures and organism do not require complex mechanisms of formation nor should simple structures and organisms be the expected result of simpler process darwinian evolution is a continuous process that leads equally to the diversity of life as well as to its complexity now i'll just give an uh, example of how people have been dedicated or people have been uh, giving their theories on probabilities about finding out life in other bodies this is a equation it's called the probability equation for life and all the parameters there has been put forward by some scientist and there was a paper i forgot to give the reference of the paper but you will find this in the end so lots of theories are coming on and we can also do a lots of research regarding finding out or estimating whether um, there are any planets or there are any exoplanets or um, habitable zone or habitable planets outside so that people gets a concrete idea to do where to look and where not to look now we'll come to the contribution of statistics well this part is mainly for my students uh, if they wish or they want to do research in the future regarding astro statistics like me uh, people can apply but well, we can use monte carlo techniques Uh, successfully to the simulation of our like planets in and outside the milky way and not only in the milky way but also outside our galaxy the well, bayesian estimates are bayesian estimators with prior and posterior distributions may bring new light to the estimates of galactic habitable zone pattern recognition which is also a very burning topic in statistics well pattern recognition may be successfully applied to to recognize or to given the patterns received from um, satellites or from other well beings from other living beings the data mining techniques uh, um, we are associated um, i am uh, um, i specifically and with my guide we are associated with ayuka that is ayuka pune and uh, they told us um, uh, very at the very beginning of my research that we are looking for people who can do data mining 
so we have lots and lots of data and we don't know means how to save that data or how to preserve and how to control that data or how to um, apprehend from that data so if, if students are thinking about their uh, careers in statistics they can also think about joining ayuka in the future well some remarks about some eminent um, scientist and astrophysicist and other like Stephen Hawking, he said that if aliens visit us, the outcome would be much as when Columbus landed in America, which didn't turn out well for the Native Americans. Actually, Stephen Hawking, he didn't outrule that uh, the possibility that there is life outside Earth, but he was afraid that, don't, that look, don't go for finding life outside Earth. If they come to us, then God knows what will happen. But there are some uh, astronomers or some astrophysicists who who think uh, positively well um, there was some director of nasa and he said that uh, that we have no doubt that there is life outside earth but i hope in my lifetime i can find out some clues whether uh, there is life outside earth well i also hope that in my lifetime i can contribute or get some signals to find out there is certainly life outside earth and some important sites um, that is the firstly the history tv 18 about ancient aliens show and then nasa research center then seti and then russian space research institute and then isro and then ayuka pune you can visit them or uh, look for their various opportunities students for students if they want to research or and, um, and teachers like me if they want to study more about these things and last of all thank you actually this is a picture of a very recent um, ufo it was sighted in 30 13th of december 2021 and it was established and it was uh, published in a paper and uh, i found that picture and gave it for your reference so thank you please let me know how you feel or what you think and thank you so much for listening